So, uh, before we kick things off, massive thank you and shout out to Sword Coast Soundscapes for your amazing yes. soundscapes. Uh -huh. uh, they are currently playing right now. Yeah, right? Uh, also, a huge shout out to Crafty Gamer Shop. They are now in two different stores in the Florida area, uh, which is fantastic. So if you don't already use candles in your tabletop experience, you heckin' should. So but let, let's, let's talk about Crafty Gamer real quick. It doesn't just have to be for a role-playing game. Like, you can just... If any you, type of tabletop experience. Any, If you just want your home to smell cool. If you want your bedroom to smell like the mire of dead men, maybe that's not something the forest want. of Fae. Yeah. Well, that's a little uh, nicer. But thanks, Crafty Gamer. Um, vision shop. Check them out. Campfire. Uh, yes. And thank you very much, Stephen. Um... Okay. I've just been active on the Twitter, and they're yeah, just, they're fantastic. They're super nice. They're super nice folks. Um, We're talking about their surprise guest on their tabletop experience last week with the cat. Um, and yeah, was, with us and, and Kronk. Yeah, oh, and Kronkles. Um, yeah, not, not here. The crafty, cat? crafty Gamer. They had an actual feline cat. jump up on the table. Uh, not a tabaxi. Uh, real, uh, that's not, my confusion. Real world, not in game. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. Cool. Okay, cool, cool. so... Sorry, I didn't mean to... No worries. Just getting back into it. Last time, you all atop the Tower of Zonthal engaged in extended combat with Nir and Vane in a very strange hybrid amalgamation of what was once Kuth and uh, throughout the, the encounter, you all did not necessarily recognize what the green dragon had been combined with. <coughs> But uh, post mortem inspecting the form, you recognized the form of a sphinx having begun to be grafted to the green dragon. Uh, which is why all of you but Balasar have currently aged a little bit. A little. Uh, except for Fleetfoot, who aged somewhere in the neighborhood of 27 years, if my Th math is 30. Right. I believe it was 17 it's and 13. 17 and 13, so yeah. 30 years. I, gained, I, was, I have aged doubled 17. in age. Boris yeah. aged 13. This might be my last adventure. I'm getting old. <laughs> oh, shit. Now I can um, say I'm too old for this shit. Yeah, you, you can. Um, you all took a moment after the, the encounter had ended to center yourself. All of you um, engaging with discussions with your... <clears throat> well, one of you with the, the deity who has chosen you. Uh, the other whose deities you've happened upon and one with a... Uh, and a, a few with the sentient weaponry that you carry with you. Um, you had a long night's rest in the morning, waking, proceeding to the base of the tower, exiting to find the small village on the outskirts of Zonthal's tower in ruins and rubble, having been subjected to a variety of different attacks and being left in ashes. You all then, utilizing fleet's cloak of intervention <laughs> after much strong suggesting after he finally figured out that he was still fucking wearing the thing uh pardon it's me so everybody. comfy <laughs> uh you all made your way back to the spine of the world and to the metallic council where you met with the remaining and surviving members of the lord's alliance including Thefana, Laerel silverhand conrad braun anvil and uh, Ramalia Haventree, the other individuals uh, who had been a part of the council, which was about three quarters of it actually, had perished or were missing, presumed dead, in the fight with the Cult of the Dragon in the battle for Waterdeep. In your conversation with these individuals, you were uh, introduced to a number of different next moves if, if you so chose them uh, they were to stay and continue to plan and prepare for the coming battle with the cult of the dragon to proceed to Thay and try to parlay with the red wizards who had not broken off and joined the splinter sect assisting the cult of the dragon or as Conrad whispered to you Fleetfoot as you uh, were leaving the, the metallic council chambers uh of the whispers and destruction of the Cloakwood. Um, 
now left in ruins, uh, seemingly at this point being used as the entry point for those from the demonic realms. Uh, you all carried on your conversations, some of you leaving to different locations. Balasar and Fleetfoot, I imagine you both were standing at the mouth of the cave with Tyberon joining. Boris uh, was polishing Vera after having her misfire once and wanting to take extra care of her. Um, you all are still surrounded by the individuals of the Lord's Alliance. The metallic dragons, assuming their uh, humanoid forms, still remain in the location. As you all remember and recall that while only one day passed for you inside the tower, eight days passed outside, and the time of Tiamat's return is merely four days away by your best approximation based on the intelligence you have received from the Harpers uh, and the Lord's Alliance making their way back to the Metallic Council. So, MSG, what would you like to do? For a thing, we should probably change names. Why? Now they know us. Good. Okay. Let them. Can I just... At some point during this, maybe not when we need to go. Do they have any more arrows laying around, like, ready for me to go? <clears throat> um, give me an investigation check. I would say also at this point, uh, Atari walks up to you in her silver dragon form, Fleet Foot. And she stares at you, her head's kind of tilted at the side for a moment as she takes you in. She backs up about three feet away. Something has changed, my tabaxi friend. Yeah, unfortunately. Would you like it reversed? Are you messing with me? I don't know why you would assume that. I, because we've had a lot of things happen to us recently. I Yes, please? She tilts her head for a moment and you watch this like strange silver glimmer behind her eyes. I don't believe we've been at the center of that, but I can assist you with this. Step forward. And she beckons... Uh, and you, now at this vantage, realize just how tall she is in her humanoid form. She stands at least eight feet in height. It's just it's all sitting on that same, same stone slab. You would assume they are the same in stature, but significantly larger. She touches you on the head for a moment. You, you see this strange silver gray energy pulse around her hand and then flow into your form. And your body feels warm. Um, and for those of you who are looking at Fleetfoot, you will witness the yellowing of his fur move back to a nice healthy white gray the lines that had progressed in the eyes showing age and around the eyes tighten and whiskers once kind of harried and drooping straighten out once more and you feel approximately 30 years younger you want to take off another five <laughs> unfortunately i can only alter what was done by magic is when don't know unless you ask was anyone else similarly affected, or was it just you? Oh, there were a few of us that all got affected. Hmm. Well, if Time they wrong. need my services, feel free to send them my way. I believe I can do it another two times today. Is it today? just... I thought we were all standing. Yeah, you, we're all standing around watching. You're standing around. Oh, yeah. If you're anybody yeah. who is around and witnessed this, I know you are off for arrows. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I rolled a nine, but, like, I would ask. Yeah, so, I would be, so in terms of asking around, it mm -hmm. takes you a while to locate the quartermaster who just kind of gruffly, yeah, yeah, we brought some of these things over that way. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to check in the back quarters there. They're hidden in one of the large barrels. Um, it depends on how many bolts you want, but they're, they're just a standard sort of size and what we could bring from, well, you know, uh, water deep in its mm -hmm. final moments. Uh, you've got about a thousand arrows if you need them, well, well, mostly for could, the army. I wish I could carry a thousand, just a couple. Couple well, feel free to go and help you. Come along with me. And he Perfect. kind of gestures and brings you back to a small alcove that's been filled to the brim, floor to ceiling, with just supplies that mm -hmm. seem to have been brought. Some of the wood on these barrels and crates seem to have been slightly charred mm -hmm. um, or decayed in some way, uh, given what they had faced in their trek, but still usable. Yeah. He points you to the arrows. And these are standard? Yeah, they're standard arrows. Yeah, if you I need mean. any more, we've got them. Our fletches down there on the base of the mountain, crafting away. Yeah, any enchanted by chance? Uh, um, no. That's fine. Wasn't sure you, fine. You, you could, actually. It's neat. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Surprisingly. Yeah. It, it, uh, well, it's odd. Mm -hmm. I might have to ask somebody about that. Thank you. Uh, right. Mind if I 
take some? Yeah, feel free, feel free. I mean, leave enough for the boys to be able to use in the coming. Of course, of course, of course. No. Uh, let's see, I've got. I'll take fifty. That's okay. Yeah, absolutely. They're far less than I thought you were going to take. Can't carry all of them. You just kind of well, you help yourself. Turns. How about this? Take seventy-five. Yeah. He just nods and walks out of the room. <clears throat> cool. Thank you. I'd say you and then I would go. I would go back to the gotcha. group and. You be... would see a young Fleetfoot. Tibbs. Hey, you look. You look better. <laughs> Atari Thank would you. look at you, Boris, and say, "Did you?" Want some as well? I didn't. I you mean, don't he, look aged, Boris. If there's any sort of consolation to that, but the years look good on you. Dwarves are made of stronger stuff than tabaxi, it would seem. There he is. He's hey, Boris. Thanks for getting me out of, of that uh, that hourglass. Appreciate that. Not even remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, Accurate. a lot of stuff happened. You had a long day. Uh, Do you want to check with Atari? Uh, this. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Right. I'm feeling <laughs> a little. Uh, she looks at each of you and in turn kind of Wiser? reaches out her hand one by one and touches and you feel the restorative magic course through you and the the kind of creaks and aches in your joints and shoulder blades of yeah. a long and prolonged conflict fade away. Uh, for Boris, you are now 13 years younger. Tybron, you are now 17 years younger. I'm 60 again, yeah. So, Atari, do you, did Dathana share with you any of the, the papers that we found? I mean, if time magic... And what you just did is restorative, but still. Um, Atari looks and <clears throat> she thinks for a moment. I've not looked, uh, spoken with Dathana about any of the, the, the scrolls, but if you'd like, she's in her study that she's taken up here in, our, in my room, actually, if you'd like to speak with her about that. Sure. Thank you. Um, also... Protantha has made it clear if you would like to use the large map at the center of our chambers here. Uh, feel free to inspect it. There are a number of changes that have occurred. Most recently, there has been a portal to the hills opened. Um, we are not sure of its status. Uh, and we're not even sure if it's there. It's mostly rumor, actually. So... We're operating off of uh, our allies in the Zinterim, who are in the area when when the region was taken to the southwest. Uh, You're talking about the Cloakwood? Mm-hmm. Well, the green fields to the south of Elcheril and Elchigard, which uh, I hope you are happy to know is still standing. The light continues to shine brightly, as it ever did. Uh, we're not sure... We know the magic is old, so we believe it is keeping away most of the undead or creeping demonic activity. What about Greenest? We have not heard from our stations in Greenest in some time. I mean, we were there. Well, it was destroyed, but there were still people there. Well, we haven't heard from any of our scout posts. So a very we can, long time, actually. Can assume the worst. Then. Well, if that's the way with the way things have been going, that seems <clears throat> to be a safe assumption. The metallic dragons from our different clutches and broods are making their way uh, to their different stations. We can carry word if you have any particular designation you'd like them to rest, based on your experience, or if you'd like them to meet with us on the field of battle and open warfare. It's been a long time since we've had a fight. We leave it to you. Do not make this decision lightly. There are a number of forces, but still far fewer than we have of our chromatic brothers and sisters. I mean, we just had a fight the other day. I don't know why it's been so long for you. Well, we would like to join the next time. It seems fun, Boris. So Especially here's, if you're dragon surfing. So here's the question. Ah, uh-huh. yes. I hear you were successful. Here's the question. What benefit are these red withers going to play for us? I'm not sure I'm the best person to talk to about that, Tyberon. Who would I'm, be? I tend to look at them unfavorably. As does Dathana. So what do we need them for? If you would like to talk about military resources, I suggest Patantha. He has the objective outlook, whereas my opinion is colored. If you truly want to know my opinion, they are necromancers. 
So anybody who falls, us or theirs, will be immediately raised and used to supplement our flanks. That is how I see it. So any hope of bringing somebody back who still has a soul tethered to their body upon death will be severed immediately and used to, well, as a massive undead horde. So it doesn't necessarily sit well with me. We, we don't need them. We don't need any more Draco liches. Thankfully, they have not tampered in that magic. Hmm. And they're not here, so obviously this isn't important to them. Their representative arrived yesterday. Um, he has since left. He has set a scroll of teleportation. He's zipping away now, actually. <laughs> uh, he has set a scroll of teleportation. They've requested you as the ambassadors. It would seem that you do carry some weight, and they recognize your actions operating outside of any sort of normal law, which is, frankly, why we approached you as well. They want to talk? They can come here. I'm not going to them. We don't have time for that. What do you guys think? I think we go to the cloakwood, shut the portal down, and then I'm a, take I, the fight to them. I like that idea. I think the Red Wizard's help would be helpful. I think that's the least of our worries right now. It would be nice to have them on our side. You have to understand I'm quite biased. And she Let me go talk to she, Protanta. She's very much physically agitated and has assumed a defensive stance. So, mm -hmm. I'll talk to Protanta about it. I'll talk to Dathana. Protanta's the gold. Okay. I would go off and find him. Okay. And I would go you after Dathana. Sure. Okay. Um, Boris, Bells, or anything you guys are doing in the meantime? How much time do we have? I mean, do we have an afternoon, or do I have days, or what, um, what's going so on here? So, based on the conversation that you've had thus far, just to kind of bring you up to speed, um, <clears throat> based on the intelligence from the Harpers and the Zinterim that you received uh, just earlier after arriving, there is a projected four days until there is some sort of ritual to take place. You don't know what that means, but that's been kind of the, the overall intercepted messaging at the Well of Dragons. So, um... Is Boris under the impression that he's camping here for five, four days, or are we off to do something? Has not been made. There's you've been told that the Red Wizards of the the true Red Wizards who have not been a splinter sect operating with the cult uh, have requested a parlay essentially to an enemy of my enemy sort of situation. Um, was the impression that you received? Um, there was the option to spend the next four days planning for military action and setting up strategy in terms of getting the location set up and readied. For the Well of Dragons. For the Well of Dragons. And then um, Fleetfoot would have mentioned about some location called the Cloakwood, which has been essentially destroyed. Is That's all you would have heard because that's all he said. Not sure if that means anything to you, Boris, but that And now mentioned. it's a portal to the Nether Realm. Uh, Possibly. There is a rumor that they have heard. Do you got anything you need done? Really, I just was thought we were going to get the Red Wizard's help, so now they don't want to go. That was okay. before we found out the Cloakwood was destroyed. Is there a room that I can blow stuff up? <laughs> or should I just do this here? <laughs> Otari looks at you and her head tilts. She goes, yes, we do have a room you can use if you'd like to blow things up. Might I watch? I don't know how long it'd be before things blow up, but sure. I would quite enjoy that, actually. And you look and you see her, her demeanor just change entirely. Come, 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 come. We'll use some... Um, and she ponders. We'll use... Preferably one with wall I can be between me and thing I blow up. I know just the route. Come with me. And then she turns and walks away. <laughs> Don't tell Pretenther. She calls over her shoulder and just keeps walking away. Uh, if, as you follow, she leads you into a, a perfectly hollowed out rectangular room that's about 60 feet in length and there are a, a series of uh, stone slabs that have been set up and kind of jagged in the middle and you look at scorch marks and different other types of testing on some of these walls that stand in place but there seem to be it's segmented in kind of an, a long S shape where these walls kind of inter intervene in the middle um, looking around she pokes her head through and looks back to you there's not a desk or chairs but I can have those procured for you if you'd like I mean, sure, things to blow up is even better than just blowing up, but... Do you have a preference? No. But if you have more of this stuff, and I pull out the black powder and stuff, any of this stuff around, I would love more of this. She leans forward curiously and, like, dips her hand in and smells it. 
I think I have these reagents in the raw form. Yeah, perfect. I'll be back. And basically, I'm going to try to tinker myself up with grenades or explosives of some form. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go with the delayed blast grenade concept. Uh, and give me a tinkering check. You will have advantage because Atari is enraptured over your shoulder and asking if you need help. Okay, dokie. Silver dragons, guys. They're very curious. <laughs> tinkering is proficiency plus dexterity. dexterity so I'm at plus. Uh, now, yes, I would say dex dexterity in this. <laughs> I rolled a 19. Ooh, so plus 10 is 29. Um, I would say that you are able to, in the span of about... So I'll say if you set to work on just grenades for the remainder of this day, which is about six hours, you could make about a half dozen to... I'd say with that roll, 29, yeah, you make about eight what would I would call <laughs> grenades with a question mark at the end of them. You're fairly confident they will work. There is a piece of flint... A, uh, um, stationed and seated over a steel vial where you can then there's a trigger that once pulled sparks and will ignite the gunpowder as well as other shrapnel that you have gathered within the uh, <laughs> within the vial itself you imagine that you have about 15 seconds once pulling this before all hell breaks loose okay so it's two rounds once I pull it that it yep. takes to go off two rounds Okay. And we'll see how much damage they deal. <laughs> I can't wait. That wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but that'll work for now. Frag grenades do 5d6 piercing damage. That they do. <laughs> that they freaking do. <clears throat> they do what now? And we have some frag grenades. 5d6 <laughs> piercing damage on a failed save. <laughs> what kind of radius are we working with? It's not small. I got no clue, man. I'm just blowing yeah, things up with a silver dragon. I don't. <laughs> I got a silver dragon. Watch so blow if, if, if you would like to, you can actually put eight, eight frag grenades in. I just wrote eight grenades because yeah. with no information. Yeah, so yeah. So, so I would say they are going to act as a because of that roll is so high. They will act as a frag grenade. So, okay. So it's a 20, twenty foot diameter. So and it takes two rounds for them to go off, or. Um, what we? is the? I read about frag grenades uh, in it's case this happens. Just a uh, <laughs> just in case this happens. Dex save. And so it's a, it's an immediate on it, toss. It's it's wherever it hits, pretty much. Okay, so um, pull it's throw. it's uh, any point. It's up an to action 60 to take feet away with you. It can be propelled with a grenade launcher up to 120 feet. Okay, but it's 60 feet Wait. throw range. Oh, I haven't made a grenade launcher yet. But 60 feet throw range. Range. <laughs> but, but I have, I have, so, I have a bow in But I have an arm. <laughs> so it will go off immediately. Disregard the. Okay. I can shoot. Cool. Farther than your arm. That's what the. What it's they like, also what weigh quite a bit, so Perfect. I'm not sure they would fly I right. It with because the I read that as I read 12 seconds somewhere, and I was like, no, oh, okay. <clears throat> now there are other grenades that might have been one of the others. Uh, I'm cool with it being a frag grenade, and I, I can't wait. I just wanted a couple of grenades just to see what would happen with them, but that's cooler. Hey. <laughs> uh, so that'll be your... So I think it's very important to notate that as this is happening, you look over your shoulder every once in a while, and you see an enraptured Otari just kind of looking... Her, you recognize the intelligence of an ancient being of this? Every once in a while, I will just suddenly... Shit and duck and see what she does. <laughs> Give me a deception check, just a general deception. Fourteen. <laughs> the first time she reacts and she says, "Oh dear," and kind of backs up. I and got and you. <laughs> the next couple of times she just kind of chuckles with you as you continue your work. Um, when it's all said and done, she looks. These are fascinating, Boris. Do you want one? Um, would you be okay with me having one? Sure, and I just. Randomly toss one to her. And just here you go. You help. <laughs> she she catches it. <coughs> oh dear! And she bobbles it for a moment because. Oh yeah, probably it. not good to toss around um, like that. <laughs> good to you know. Have no idea. Probably Thank not good. You. All right. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to using this actually. Probably best not to use on friends. But I mean, you saw. What Very good yeah. suggestion. I appreciate that. Wonderful. Thank you, Boris. Hopefully, I can try to replicate your success. Uh, Balasar, anything you are planning on doing this time? Um, can I go over to the map and update my map? Yes. Your updates are as follows. 
I just kind of like yeah. drop them down over the top of my map. As you inspect, <clears throat> Baldur's Gate is still in open conflict. Um, it looks that the majority of the eastern side of the city, at least based on the map that you Good. see, is in ruin. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the majority of the forces stationed there have been pushed to the uh, Could to be the good coast. target practice. Alright. Huh? Um, Could be good target practice. Too. Waterdeep. You throw one and I try to hit is it. On their map, logged we as occupied. <laughs> Lost to us. Yeah, from what you're, from what you're able to see, Log is occupied. <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. That's what you're going to tell. The majority of the southern portion of the map to Neverwinter? The, almost to Om. Yeah, I think we last week we said Neverwinter was Om. Yeah, almost to Om. So you're looking at from uh, the river Kionthar all the way south to <sighs> the mountains bordering Om are currently <clears throat> marked as raised. Um, mm -hmm. leading to, in a funnel-like pattern, to the uh, Well of Dragons, which is marked fairly heavily with enemy troops. Uh, if you choose to ask, you can get an uh, approximation for how many you may be facing, um, but just looking at this and taking it in for a moment, give me an... Intelligence check, straight intelligence with advantage, given your military history. There's a nine. A nine? So there are a variety of different unit sizes, um, and you certainly can see a number of different sizes in terms of uh, a variety of unique troops. It's tough to make out a specific number, but just having looked at a number of these maps growing up, um, your safe guess is several hundred to a couple thousand. Perfect. Uh, it may be more. The units of measure and size of these, uh, of these markers are to scale of an ancient dragon, so it's very difficult to make out. Um, the mirror is occupied in all black. Most of the high moor is occupied in all red. The gray peaks are similarly occupied, but at this time they are in a white. Um, there are sporadic dots of blue throughout, although significantly smaller, and there is, strangely enough, no true green occupied locations, um, but, no, there are strangely no green occupied locations. Um, On your best approximation, 45% of this map has been in some way affected by the cult's activities over the last uh, eight days. Okay. Okay. Anything else you'd like to look for either? Are there any weather notations on this map? <sighs> Give me an investigation check. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Um, good, good. With that, you take a poke around after looking at the different uh, symbols for the forces that have been laid out. Uh, what you notice with that roll is there are significantly fewer of the forces that are delineated to designate your <laughs> allies. Uh, Significantly fewer. <clears throat> um, there are a few weather notations in locations that are currently held by what would be allied forces. So Baldur's Gate towards the coast, you see that it is designated as rainy. Um, towards the spine of the world, you see blizzard conditions uh, stretching southward uh, for about 100 miles. Um, towards the Well of Dragons, 
there is no true delineated weather, but you see two two symbols that would represent some sort of indication, and it is uh, what looks to be from your from what you can make out a mix of cloudy and then rain has kind of been pervasive there. It's interesting to you that it's a mix of both. You're unable to tell if it's a natural phenomenon or not at this current juncture, but it is strange to see two notated so. Uh, Two of those notated, whereas everything else is fairly stark okay. in these indications. Okay? Cool. Don't worry, my so <coughs> Fleetfoot, you are traveling to see Dathana. Indeed. Uh, give me an investigation check for your location. Uh, 21. Uh, it takes you about five minutes. You're able to just kind of poke your head in and out of the chambers, and you see her at the end of a large... Uh, open chamber uh, there curled next to her is a massive <clears throat> uh, who is she sitting with? I've got it right here as he consults his notes. She was uh, in Atari's chambers, wasn't she? You see her sitting curled up next to a copper dragon um, and which does strike you as odd because she is using Atari's chambers. Um, and the as you walk in, the right eye of the bronze dragon flicks open and stares at you, and you see this massive slit of, of pupil kind of track you as you make your way into the room. I'd like to friend week him. Give me a charisma <laughs> check. Just because. Mm. 24. You give her a hearty wink. And you watch the side of her mouth curl upward and kind of lazily watch you as you make your way through the room. There's a low grumble that, as it just kind of... Almost like a cat's purr, uh, but a lot more gravelly and intimidating as fuck if you didn't know it was kind. Um, Dathana, hearing this, looks over her shoulder. Eyes you. Hello. We're going to the Clovewood. Naturally. And I'm coming with you. With us or meeting us there? No, I'm coming with you. Good. How did you expect you were getting there? I I don't expect much of anything anymore. Fair assumption, but you have a number of allies here who are willing to assist you. So. I was thinking dragon, but teleporting would be pretty easy too. Uh, also, much less conspicuous. <laughs> D Dathana. You I understand how we operate. I do, which is why I tell you these things. So you know that's what we're doing. I had hunch. Conrad told you? He did. I can't wait to set his pants on fire. Um. I didn't tell you that he told us. Well, that would be a lie. And you know my thoughts on that? That's fair. That's fair. But I'm not wearing pants, so we're good. You uh, send your fur. Look, I just decreased in age 30 years. I, I notice you look significantly better. Right? Back to normal. Uh, goes my excuses, though. Um, Xanthal's notes. Have you had a chance? Obviously, The ravings of a madman from my first sort of in inclination. However, he was onto some things. What he noticed was there was some sort of significant temporal anomaly that took place when one changed planes. What he attempted to do was harness this and use it to his own ends. Most wizards of his power tend to do a number of things. Go mad, um, attempt to perish in their own way or manner of choosing, but the majority of them attempt to escape death. And those that attempt to do so, well, they have very few options. It would seem that Zonthal does not want to become a lich, which is the road most often traveled. He, say, he sought to reverse time by creating a location that was in and of itself a temporal anomaly, which is why you disappeared for the period of time you did. The big hourglasses. I was not there. I know, I'm telling you. Oh, they were large. Big hourglasses. I mean, they rotated and that Not changed. one for subtlety, was he? No. <clears throat> no. Well, I had some cool diamond, and I'll reach into my cloak and pull out the bag with the diamond. As you pull it out, it rattles around, and looking inside, they are actually solid diamonds at this point. Well, it was dust. But Might now I see diamond. those, please? Of course. 
She takes it and holds it in her hand. You see this flare of blue behind her eyes. Hold on to these. These might be used to teleport you a certain distance away at any given time. Uh, mechanically speaking, you throw them 30 feet wherever they land. <laughs> you will teleport there. How many do I have? You have three. Three teleport. But do they blow up? But do they yeah. blow up, though? Uh, <laughs> Can I see one to blow it up when it lands? Um, okay, Cheech. Yeah. <laughs> Better than I'll... Uh, so that's our next campaign. Uh, so you're ready at any moment. We might have some trouble swaying Balasar. He still thought we were going for the. The red decision wizard. is yours. If you've chosen to go alone or as a group, you can accompany me. Tyberon and I at least have. Oh, good. It'll be good to have company. I was going with without you. Um, what are we walking into? I don't know. It Nothing. is, I am unable to use my magics to observe the arena, so naturally you can understand I'm quite concerned. Nothing the old-fashioned way, either. No. My circle has been decimated. Then we're going. Perfect. My family is safe, that much I know. They are. Well, from what I've heard, you can only send so many messages. And Leaf and Zargon? They are interred on another plane. I, if you speak to them in physical form, I cannot answer that question. If you speak to them in a spiritual form, I cannot answer that question. It frustrates me. Understand. Which I know that Leaf would love, but. Oh, I thought he'd be haunting her by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll. I'll There's a little voice over her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, did you see what they just did? Um, and I'll grab the amulet, and I'll go gather the others. Good. I'll meet you at the entrance. Anything else? What would you like me to say? Thus far, it seems the cult has been two steps ahead of us, which for me is quite frustrating. What we do know is information, and that is all we have. Now, the information as it stands, might be good or bad. I cannot imagine my home that I held for many years being turned into some sort of den for demons. If that is the truth, well, then I cannot wait to intervene. And you're sure you want to go with us? I believe I will be successful with or without you. That's Absolutely. bold even for you. You've never seen me work. I've worked with very different things. We'll see. And I'll turn and we'll see you at the entrance. No response. But you do hear her shift in her table, do a slight chuckle, and then the sound of a quill scratching on parchment. And I'll make my way back to find the others. You got it. Tyburn, you were looking for Pretenther. Pretenther. Um, give me an investigation check as well, just to kind of ask around, because he did exit with the others. That's actually much better. Uh, 22? 22. Uh, it doesn't take you long. You hear the the, 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 the telltale sign and sound of a humanoid being, uh, assuming their true form. Uh, as you round a corner, you see the massive gold hindquarters of Protanther, the ancient golden dragon, walking away from just kind of... Protanther. A moment, please. His head whips around, and you kind of hear this deep, resonant... Tyberon. Well, follow. We will go to my side of the world. Climb aboard. Sure. As you kind of scramble up his back, you hear him... He carries on at a standard pace, um, weaving his way deeper into the mountainside. As you walk... So, Tyberon, what is on your mind? Do we need these these wizards? Oh, need the, is a relative term, Tyberon. From the sounds of it, we haven't much time left. That is correct. If the information we have received from our agents is true. Why would they want to parlay and not stay? 
If they wish to speak to us, they should come to us. One of the uh, trademarks of the arrogant and narcissistic is the unwillingness to look upon failings. This has held a mirror to those failings. If there's anything I've learned over the last few months, you must look past your arrogance and your selfishness. Well, you do not lead the Red Wizards of Thay. They can lead themselves? They can. They've done so for what they would call effectively centuries. Now, you asked if we need them. <sighs> Allies in a time of war are difficult to come by, but I tend to believe, as it was taught to me by the soul that you carry on your back, that the allies you surround yourself with are a reflection of your own true character. Take that for what you will. That's the answer I needed. Good. I'd really like just a grenade to go off right now. Just boom. <laughs> They're just like, are we like flying around the, the mountains? Like, I'm on his back, or is he just walk, walking, <laughs> walking around? Walks around. And there's just a very low <laughs> rumble that emanates from his. Just in phone. my head, that's been happening through all of your conversations. <laughs> no, that, was, that was a Steven question, not, not a tavern question. Well, it, he's just weaving okay. through the. You see him kind of maneuvering through these tunnels that okay. grow in size. And you, based on your knowledge and mountains being one of your favorite terrains, you know you are moving deeper into a mountain <clears> peak. <throat> mm -hmm. You eventually find your way into what is this incredibly large open stone chamber. That is a dome, a roughly dome-shaped, hewn and cut from the rocky interior of the spine of the world. Inside it is warm, in stark contrast to the frigid cold of the exterior of the mountain. Blazing in the center is a massive fire pit, the likes of which you have never seen before, extending about a hundred feet in diameter in all directions. Uh, the hot coals tend to um, fill the interior, and on the walls you see some incredible artwork, uh, from a variety of ages. He pauses and whips his head around. We were tutored here by him. Now, I will accept any allies if given good reason. Ultimately, they have requested you. So, as I have been taught, I will put my faith in you then. Do with that what you will. I'm just kind of sit there in silence for just a moment. His head is kind of whipped around and is just staring at you, unblinking. We've lost a lot lately. They don't wish to treat with us here. I will not go to them. A new decision is made. There are other things that... There are other allies that are more powerful than a handful of necromancers. And in all fairness and with all due respect, the last thing I need is for them to attempt to make a Draco Lich in the middle of a battle. They would be foolish if they attempted to do so, but I respect You're not wrong, your but opinion. I owe that to the Metallic Council, and I owe that to folks. I respect that. So... Your decision is made. I believe we were to go to the Cloakwood. I hear it was destroyed. I consider this a fool's errand, but it is not my decision to make. You talk about siding yourself with allies. Dathana's probably one outside of you and the other Metallics and direct members of MSG. Probably one of the most powerful and vengeful we have. He just kind of kneels down to the ground. Just like, I'd like to. S in. He looks. We are all prone to rash actions. What I consider rash might not be to others. It is a matter of perspective. If you choose to do this, make your decision, act on it. But understand, we are limited <coughs> in two things time and resources. I look at you as one of these, a resource, a powerful one. You have acted in ways that have affected the cult in very 
unique circumstances. I believe that we might tip the scales with your assistance. So. I'm not going anywhere. I'll well, be here. don't promise me things you cannot keep, Tiberon. If I'm to die, I will die what I, I feel is right. You know my story. Well, that's the perfect way to die, then. I didn't have much. And now you have greatness. And a lot was taken from me recently. And a lot was gained. You're n I'm not disagreeing with you there, but... I cut the head from near in vain, and I still feel empty. When I found out that... The closest thing that I had to a brother outside of... Balasar and Fleetfoot. His home, the place we sent him to be safe, the place that I felt most at home, is now gone. I will not allow this cult, I will not allow Tiamat to take that from me, from my friends, from my family, and from the world. Well, hold your family close. But do not let it drive you to foolish actions. Only you can determine where the line is drawn. I'm not alone. I also want to ask you to consider this, if you have a moment. And he chuckles for her. Uh, he just kind of just... <laughs> <laughs> if Leaf is anything like Dathana, and I imagine he might be, at least in some way, maybe, consider his perspective. He'd want to fuck shit up. Well, then it seems you're on the correct path. I'll tell you what, Pretemptor. When all this is done and over with, I'll tell you about him. Well, assuming we all live, and that includes me, I would love to hear the tale. Now, go. Thank you. He just nods and turns back and you see him stare into the fire. Before I go, what is this place? When all this is over, if you're interested, I will tell you that. <laughs> in the back of the room. Assuming one of your friends doesn't blow it up. Oh, that's probably Boris. Can I get a Boris yeehaw in the background of this too? <laughs> Could probably get Silver Dragon yeehaw out of this. <laughs> I don't know if... I, I'm sure you might. Oh my god. What's the copper's name again? Uh, Taz Michaela. I, I, that's what I thought it was. Uh, Taz Michaela offered part of herself to folks who become stronger. And did it work? It did. Well, I can't have my sister besting me now, can I? And he rotates his sword and you hear this. Bastard. You see this, you hear this loud resounding. <laughs> And a gold scale pops from his back and slides and to the ground. It's massive, <clears throat> larger than your head, but it exists and is on the ground. I'll just walk up to it and touch the bow to it. You see that there is a definitive reaction and ripple across Fox, and you hear a. Oh, I need more time. Very well. Okay. <laughs> so as you do pick it up, you watch it begin to shrink in okay. size as well. So you don't have to like lug it with you. Okay. It does shrink in size. That is your back armor for the rest of the campaign. Yes, I now have. He carries with him the cloak of a dragon scale. <laughs> it's just plastic dice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just pocket it. Okay, you got it. Like in the um, breast pocket inside. So I would say you, Fleetfoot. And Tybron, you gather together almost at the same time back in the central chamber with Balasar still deep in study in the map. You also do hear a couple of shouts from a voice you do recognize as Boris in the corner as he continues to, uh, as well as the clang and tinkering sounds that he you've you've grown accustomed to him making in his time. Gathan is going with us. Let's do it. Balasar. Yeah. Cloakwood. Dathana's going with us. 
the red wizards. We don't need them. They were here and then they left. The cloak was destroyed. It's a portal to other realms. We have things to worry about here. If we go to the Cloakwood and close this portal, we can cut off Tiamat's reinforcements. I understand your sentiment with having all the backup that we have, but we don't need a bunch of undead beings running around. Demons. I that are on our side. Correct, but what are a bunch of undead things going to do? We, they wouldn't be on our... If we go to the Red Wizards and the portal stays open, it does us no good. I just don't think we need to worry about the red wizards. Not think, th- think about this. What is a bunch of what are a bunch of undead thralls going to do a, a, against fiends and demons coming out of the nine hills? Our power is not going to be matched there. If we can take that away from Tiamat, if we can take that away from the cult. We've got more power on our side. If we can stop that. It will be an uphill battle, of course it will. But that's where we excel the most. And I'd much rather take that that strength out of their back pocket than add what little we can with some necromancers that don't even have the time to be here and meet us. They want to parlay with us, they want to treat with us because they recommend us. Well, guess what? You can come to me. You can come to MSG. I don't go to you. Not anymore. Sounds kind of picky, but okay. I mean, out of character, you really waited until Leaf was dead to start doing that? He's been saying that since the beginning. Come to me, asshole! (laughs) (laughs) That's where we picked it up from. Uh, You can go parlay with the Red Wizards if you want. But I have to do this. As do I. And I would much rather we stay together. Plus, I kind of want to see Dathana fight. She's pissed. pissed. And she can teleport us back out. But even Dathana's here. She's leaving. That's Yeah, because you're going. She was going regardless. She was. She was going regardless. She specifically said. She just hoped that we would go too. What did Protanther have to say? He said, our strength is in our allies. And he, he trusts the allies that we choose. Okay, I'll have to and do I choose tonight. not to pick an arrogant group of people to be on my side. <laughs> You've seen me. I was me. going to be a necromancer. Be a necromancer, and I don't even want to talk to him. So we'll talk about that later. Yep, that'll come up. This is new. Time. Do you... Do you you remember how arrogant I was. Leaf hated it. Leo hated it. You hated it. And I've changed for the better. Oof. I didn't have a problem with it. Well, I mean, because you just... You're fleet foot. That's true. But I've changed for the better. And that's because of you. And because of what this group has done for me. I mean, I, I think we should go to the Red Wizards, but I know that I'm outnumbered and... I can't articulate a parlay well enough to get an ally, so... We don't know what Boris says. Boris! <sighs> You're he isn't there, and if I'm getting those grenades, I'm spending all night doing it, so... He's, he's occupied. It's been about three hours, and he's got three more of work. Okay. Let's weigh it out this way. What no, I do not have 13,000 hit points. From that is direction. incorrect. If we, we go to wow. the other side... Okay, Cloakwood, not a portal to the Nine Hells. And also, we it's rumor, so if we get there and everything's A-OK, we bloop, teleport back. We have Dathana. If we go to the Red Wizards, we got no way of getting out if things go south. They gave us a teleport scroll. No, he left a teleport scroll. For us to teleport there? No, they were going to give us one. I already asked about it. I thought that was for them to teleport to us. No, I asked for one to get back. But why would they be here one day and then leave the next? They sent an ambassador. Oh. 
portal the nine hells. Like I said, you guys are going, so I'm not going by myself. Boris is pretty good at talking. I don't think we should split up, but I don't want you to fight for something that you don't agree with. I tell you what, if we get to the Cloakwood, everything's fine. There's no portal. We go to the Red Wizards. We'll bring the teleport scroll to the Red Wizards. After we're done at the Cloakwood, oh, we're out of there. I don't think there'll be time, but okay. We're gonna have to make hard choices like this. I don't think there's enough time for anything. Let me know when we're going. Whenever Boris is done doing whatever he's doing. Let's go find Boris. You all, at a certain point, would peek through after following just the sounds of general tinkering, uh, gaggery, and awe of a silver dragon that is odd to hear just a, oh my, um, are able to peek over and watch Boris working intently with the aid of Atari over his shoulder at a table within the back of a S-shaped stone chamber. Um, at this point, he has what looks to be uh, iron uh, vials, for lack of a better word, that he is packing and filling with a black powdery substance as well as broken shards of what looked to be a, uh, a number of pieces of scrap metal in the vicinity that has been procured by, you would imagine, um, Atari. And fitting them together with an interesting contraption that looks as if uh, anybody who wants to can give me an intelligence check to try to figure out what this is. Boris knows. Seven. Seven. This is odd, what he's doing. Ten. Very odd, what he's doing. Fleetfoot. Oh, one. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Balasar, as it glints, you notice that there looks to be a trigger, and he Boris is systematically weakening the interior of these uh, of these iron vials, so that you've seen Vera work. You know the sound it makes, you know the isolated fire and um, propulsion of these strange uh, metal pellets Boris refers to as bullets. Um, it looks like this is that, just in a compact location, and the sharp shards of metal, you know for a fact if that hit you, it'd hurt. Still not necessarily sure what it is, but you're able to identify some individual components. Interesting. Can I press the digitation as he sets one down, a shower of sparks out of it? You know I have that spell, right? I know. <laughs> okay. If I know you, you do. Okay. If you'd like, Boris, as you complete your, what do I see, your fifth, um, one of these, you're, at this point you are masterful moving through these motions. You kind of tire it, uh, tie it nice and tight, get the, the nozzle set on the end of this, uh, this, <laughs> this iron vial and just set it to the side and as it Gently, tink, on the table next to you, there's this <laughs> sparks that look familiar to you, having made them a number of times before. Uh, looking over your shoulder immediately, you just kind of nonchalantly view the, your three companions at the edge, just observing your activity. I, I didn't want to scare you and have you drop one of those. Wouldn't recommend you cleaning anything around here right now. <laughs> but it would be real easy. So, mm -hmm. Boris, Red Wizards, Cloakwood, Portal to Nine Hells. How much longer am I working with shiny on this? I've been an hour. I'm not done yet. I'll see you in an hour. Think about it. I think about the Atari. Can you get me the other thingamajigger with the... Oh, yes, indeed. And she kind of runs over to the shoulder. Uh, you are only making another. If you wait, we will be more prepared. And we can... Outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like, you can. You don't have to pout. You could watch. Oh, I'm not pouting. You're pouting. This is defensive. That's a pout. That is literally what Also, the all those, of those little is. explosions that have just happened have been right next to Boris's ear, so he's not hearing things real great right now, you guys. <laughs> it's not, I just, this way I can. <laughs> Atari leans into your shoulder and just. They're pouting! No, it's. Yes, we are all shouting right now. It's been loud. <laughs> yes! She looks at you for a bit, grins, and just. I'll fetch the iron! <laughs> and runs back. Uh, you all wait for the next hour, just kind of sitting around and standing outside the door, looking. 
<laughs> not pouting. I'm gonna shove a drink into his hand. Minor boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a drink slams out next to you of the dark ale. I could use one. You got this. You got next. I keep my arms crossed. Thank you. Bowser just slides the drink into your arm and. Uh, you all wait, hearing Boris tinker with just a little tink. Hey, what is he making? Fuck my now. Bowser, 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 you hear that? Stuff. They, they look like similar things to his Vera, but uh, that's a, that's big, bigger. I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I mean, maybe throwable. If it helps us. I don't know. I was. I Either think, way. Maybe. Either way, there's going to be a lot of fighting coming up. Mira-ish. So. I don't know. <sighs> Did you find anything out about what to expect heading south? Uh, I'll relay all of the map stuff that I have. Did you see the cloak one on the map? Yeah. It pretty much is gone. Gone or occupied? What'd you say about it? Gone or occupied? The Cloakwood specifically? Yeah. There are zero allied forces. Gone. Zero allied forces. Mm-hmm. I'll also sprawl out my map and be like, this is what I've copied over. So I know a little bit about some of the forces that can come out of the hell, specifically fiends. I know they're quite powerful. They can be. There's an Alan correct. How big the portal is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do fiends have different levels, much like devils? For this, give me an. Fiends are also favorite enemy. Yeah, so give me an intelligence check with advantage. Okay. Um, yeah, thank goodness. 17? Okay, so you would know that devils slash fiends and demons are two separate entities. Oh, fiends are fiends are devils. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, there's very little crossover in that Venn diagram. Okay. Now, to answer your question... Devils. I, I, I Steven gets this, this confused. Devils have do I, have a hierarchy, although it is not necessarily as. Look at it as a cannibalistic hierarchy, where I can best you and grow in power. When I perish, because I perish, I repopulate where I am, within, within the abyss, right? Yeah. As devils occupy the abyss, um, as a lesser devil, because I have lost power. Okay. Whereas a demon adhere to a rigid hierarchy set within individual domains. Um, and they mentioned these are devils. They mentioned this is the portal of the nine hells, my okay. friend, which is where demons live. I'm trying to remember back when they said what was amassing at the... Right, let me double check. Amassing at the Well of the Dragons, I believe they said devils. Do, 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 do. Many sessions ago. Let me take a look at here. You, uh, so I, I switched that up. Devils, Nine Hells, Demons, Abyss. My apologies. Mm-hmm. So swap that up. Devils, rigid hierarchy. Okay. Demons. Um, yeah, demons just do like whatever the fuck they want. And the yeah. devils, there's like lesser devils. and Lesser devil, greater devils, and then arch devils at the highest. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's what you would know. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember back from previous sessions, I think. Devils. They said devils were messing. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, based on some of the studying that I've done and throughout the last the years, there are different hierarchies of devils. Lesser, greater, arch. So, depending on what's amassing and what's coming out of this supposed portal, if we can cut that off, we can possibly be dealing a, a blow to the cult in terms of power power that they have on their side that we can take away from them. We either take away power from the opposition or we gain allies. Boris, if Maybe. you check your inventory, you'll find the hourglass. And I think I think it's more detrimental for us to deliver blows to them. They've been they've been hitting us with blow after blow after blow, but now it's our turn. 
It's our turn to take something away from them. It's forced on you. They're also going to expect us to get allies. They're not going to expect us to go to a... A, this conversation a, is happening on Boris's A so. forest that's destroyed to try to close a portal. They're not going to see that coming. All they've seen this entire time we've been fighting, the, fighting them is us diving headlong into the next battle. They're not going to expect us to be strategic like this. Plus, we're teleporting there. So, like, I don't like the fact that we're not making a big entrance, but... If we get there and everything's fine, we teleport to the Red Wizards. I was all in for the Red Wizard plan until I found out the cloak was destroyed. <laughs> really, Alan? Do you know his arcana? It's shit. That's amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> you found you, but. That's all Boris knows, right? So this is this. That's is, amazing. No, I don't. I, that's all great. Boris also, knows. Also, think about the. <laughs> You know, this is the arrogant side of MSG. Think about the blow that you can have of sending a demon, a devil, back to hell, and now he has to fight through hell. You took all that stuff away from your father and kind of left him with nothing. We can do that to the cult with a third, or half of their power. Could be. I was ready to go. Could be fun. <laughs> I. You're gonna get to swing your big swords in either way. I just wanted to learn to summon red, red, red wizardry. You wanted to learn to summon red wizardry? Just helping to learn some stuff. I, what do you want to know? I don't know. Bowser, you're going to have to speak up. <laughs> Boris is still being real loud. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I said we're all out here real proud. With some new allies. I was hoping to learn some more magic. That's all. When this is all done and over with, we can all learn more magic. Well, when we're done and over with, the Red Wizards aren't going to want to ally with us anymore. Then why are we allying with them in the first place? They'd make good allies for the battle, and I could learn some magic, probably. But you could also spend time with Dathana, who's No, more... you don't. You could spend some more time <laughs> <don't>. with Fleets. <laughs> no, you don't. You, you, you just, don't want to. see, the thing about that is, is that's divination magic. And that's all fun and good, but I... What do you want to learn? What kind? The necromancy. I think it'd be interesting. <laughs> All right. Uh, Go to the cloakwood. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but can't 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 you guys learn any type of magic? I'll take you to the College of Whispers. If you really want to learn. The what? The College of Whispers. That's really what bard school I studied at. I'm studying to be a necromancer. Do I know what that means? You mean intelligence check? Do I know what that means? Intelligence check. No, I don't know what that means. Seven. Nineteen. You do not know an arm to Tybron, you've only ever heard this mentioned once. And it was mentioned when you were in a bar in a small town. And it was by a half-drunk farmhand who, by your best recollection, heard that somebody told him from that old College of Whispers about some new folks coming to town. That's the only phrase you've ever heard. What bar was that? Whispers. It was seated in the town of Parnast. That's in the mountains? That's where Skyreach Castle was settled. So, so you sing people back to life? Was? That was where Skyreach Castle. When Leaf and I hopped it's on. It's more so... That that's where my like dissonant whispers when my eyes go purple. That's <laughs> left over from so, that. so this whole time you've been lying to us too. Yeah. Why? I did look. If I could have predicted any of this was so, gonna get us this far. So let me ask this question. The whole hiding in the wardrobe thing while your buddies were being attacked, is that is that just a bunch of shit, too? <laughs> sure is. Fleet, I love you, but I hate you at the same time. That's fair. That's fair. So when this is done and all over with, can we at least sit I, down and, and, and have a drink and you can, like, actually tell me your story? I mean, if you haven't noticed, I've kind of made a... I mean, a, a 180. Yeah, this so, is true. so, like, how different is your magic compared to, like... My magic, though, like, 
Is that going to help me? Because, I mean, if you want to follow down that path, I can teach you to bring people back from the dead. I already can, as you've seen. Also, should be noted, I brought someone back from the dead. Did that's that's not a... Didn't you use Revivify? Well, yeah. What do you think I learned it? Is it Revivify Divination Magic? No. No. You don't know. <laughs> I figured. I figured bringing somebody back to life in that sense. There's That's... a lot of things. So there's a lot of things that your magic is different than mine. I, I'm gonna bow out gracefully. Just don't. You don't have to lie to us anymore. We're probably going to die. Yeah. I'd like to die knowing that you're a true friend. Look, has any knowing that now and looking back, does that change anything about how you feel about me? No. Then. There it is. Okay. Jamna and the caravan, the little gnome. Yeah, why didn't you like her? Because... Whew, we got a lot to unpack. Oh, well, <laughs> so... <laughs> we got we're time. We're going to do this now, good. <laughs> oh, we're hopping into this. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, I guess I'll make two more. Yeah, she seemed really nice to me. We can never figure it out. Because she was my mentor in the Zentarum. And if we're going to bump into the Zentarum, I probably should let you all know. But she was killed by the cult. And we're all better off for it. Okay. She was a little weird, I haven't but... spoken to the Zentarum or any of my contacts. Jamna was the only person that I have come across that even probably still cares. Probably. I don't know. But if that's their informant, then they're going to recognize or know me. Maybe. I should have stayed 60. Fuck. I think she can redo that. No, nah, it's a bad idea. So, Red Wizards? No, that's why I'm saying we don't need to go to the Red Wizards. Oh. We don't need necromancers on our side. And if you really want to learn that branch of magic, I will bring you to the College of Whispers. And, and they'll be able to if that's what you want to go to the Red Wizards for, I will I will take you under my pelt. So, Balasar, let me, let me ask you this. I see what you did there. Thank you. Uh, why necromancy? It's, it's another school of wizardry that I find interesting. But what There's about... There's no fault in that. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of power that comes with it, but is there something specific about necromancy? Just, you want a couple of skeletons walking around you, or do you want... Are you lonely? Mm, I was thinking more like golems. Is that necromancy? Yeah, this is something I don't know, Kent. I don't actually know if that's necromancy, but... I mean, if you Maybe, want, tell you what. If you want, let's go alone. I'm sure we can buy you one. We're going to be quite. Rich First of all, I think you need to understand some things. I've been about trying to be in character and not quite pay attention, but I think I just heard all this. And yeah, you, just, you did, Boris. If that, if you think <laughs> maybe Boris can make you, you one, I don't know. Golem, Leaf is literally not, turning around in his grave right now, just like, <laughs> the, what the fuck are you people doing? Like <laughs> it is warm. <laughs> I. Look, if that is the only reason, I promise I will show you all of those things. And I'll do what I can to help. Sorry about lying to you. It's, that sucks. It's okay. But I'm changing. You. Th this you, is not the path I wanted to go you've down. You've done a lot of things lately that uh, have been uncharacteristically... There may or may not be a goddess involved. Maybe. I don't know. We That's... do need to discuss its alignment. And that's that's you. If you if there's a if there's to a, answer because you said, am I feeling okay? That's what. Uh, okay, uh, hey, no hard feelings. Like I'm, I just if if I'm going to die, I want to know that. You well, know. you're not gonna die, and if you do, I can bring you back. <laughs> Too soon? Too soon for the neck. Okay. Uh, Balasar, let's go to the cloakwood. If Boris is in it. If Boris would finish up, because now we're done talking about the awkward things. It has been about an hour. Hey, Fleet. It's, it's okay. Okay, so you all, oh. Boris, wrapping up, you... Uh, so, Atari, what should we call them? Um, well, these are... What are they intended to do, exactly? You all begin to hear this conversation as your, your conversation fades. Boris shouts <laughs> this. I don't know. Maybe we call them Dragon Claws. Dragon claws. I like that. 
What if we called them the dragon bites? Or do you prefer the claws? I was merely thinking the, sh- the shards of iron look like teeth. We could call them dragon's teeth. <gasps> I like that indeed. Okay, we call them dragon's teeth. Dragon's teeth. Don't drop them. I will not drop... This one that you gave me is quite generous, actually. Uh, I hope that when we do meet on the field of battle, you get to witness me use it. Oh, that'd be oh, amazing. Oh, well, perfect. Well... Where is that going to be? Where are we fighting? I imagine... Well, you, we're going to look to you all for assistance, but my... Uh, per, personally, I would prefer if we brought... If we deployed a variety of forces systematically across the field near the Well of Dragons, both encircling and ensnaring the individual troops that we are scouting at this point in time. So the fight is at the Well of Dragons. Yes. Okay. So that's where you're going? I it was that general. My apologies. Yes, the Well of Dragons is where I imagine this will all kind of come to a head as it were. Excellent. We shall go there. Oh, perfect. Now well, I, of course. Where are we going? Where is the fight? We should go to the fight. Well, we're not. We're, Atari, let's go. We're kind of okay. And <laughs> you see, you kind of stroll out. You see Boris come out. A little bit of gunpowder on his hands as he just kind of dusts it off and walks out in front of you. Uh, as your conversation comes to a close, Boris emerges with Atari behind him, holding this strange-looking um, iron uh, sphere. With she has in her hands, very delicately enclosed by some sort of metal metallic cap. Um, and a small uh, circular pin that housed within the side beneath the cap itself. Um, she emerges, we've made dragon's teeth. And but don't tell the gold one. <laughs> and she keeps walking. Yes, please don't tell Prosantha. I wouldn't like that at all. And what do they do? Walking. Besides blow up at random intervals if the echoing has been any indication. Yes, and we are going to fight now. She knows where fight is. We're going there. Well yeah. of dragons. You coming? I thought we're going to the Cloakwood. Why? That is not where fight is. We're going to. Well, we're going to go to the Well of Dragons by way of the Cloakwood. We're going to stop by the Cloakwood and make sure everything's good there. Yes. Last time I look at map, there was no w- Cloakwood on way to Well of Dragons. Right, but we're teleporting. Yes. We need to close a support a, a supposed portal to the Nine Hells. Cutting off reinforcements for the cult. He's looking at Atari. Like, uh, she. What? You so, say fight is at well. They say the you, fight is at the well. And it's a very general days. question you've asked, Boris. The, the larger fight is indeed at. Well, I want larger fight. Yes. But if you are truly, you've decided then to go to well, the Cloakwood and forego the Red Wizards of Thay. Two of us have. Okay. And one of us just had to be convinced. I see. So there's a misunderstanding. Boris, with regards to what they're referring to, the cult of the dragon is attempting to. Um, bolster their reserve forces with devils by way of entry point from a very um, arcanically charged location known as the Cloakwood. Uh, if I may. Absolutely. Uh, Boris, do you remember how you felt when you killed a dragon for the first time? No, I was going to go see how it felt to kill whatever's coming to kill the dragon. No, but you remember when you joined us and you, you, you killed the dragon for the first time and you were very excited about it? You ever killed a devil before? Yes, many times. Well, are they small <laughs> devils or big devils, Boris? Well, I I was on the Abyssal Plains once. I had to do that a lot. I see, I see. Well, these are trying to escape from there. And if you've been there, you know why you can't blame them. But this conversation went totally the wrong way. I don't understand I, what we're... Th- we go too far. I don't give Boris enough credit. <laughs> Boris, I'm sorry. You are one hell of a badass. That's what I got the... This togi from you asked where I got it. I told you abyssal plains. I did. Or we didn't believe you. That is very much from the abyssal plains. And you just kind of see Atari look her eyes flash blue for a moment. I very much. I, I just I just Boris. May I shake your hand for being the just give him a business card. Just the badass. Give him a new business card. Yeah. What the hell happened to you people while I was in there blowing things up? A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot has happened. Do you not hear this background music? That gets very emotional. And Tyburn breaks the fourth plan, <laughs> suffering say, 28 um, points of psychic damage. <laughs> no, I hear no music now. Um, at this point, Atari kind of uh, has Dathana let you know who uh, she was intending to go with or without you. Frankly, I feel a bit more secure that you're going with her now. You should come too. I had a good talk with Protenter. I might enjoy that. 
When's the last time you saw battle? Two. I picked you up from Waterdeep. You're not wrong. My apologies. So it's been a very long day. For us, it's been nine days. So See, I've had a nine day, one, 24 hours. It's a long time, I yes. agree. Mm. Um, I wonder what the dragon's teeth would do if you shot them out of your mouth with your breath. You see one eyebrow on her very like fair elven face raise up, and it's just her, the platinum hair just kind of extends into her hairline. That is an excellent question. <laughs> All right, I've made the my decision. The, I believe I'm going. The cloakwood? Uh, I will take care of any sort of draconic interference, if there is any to be had. I would hate to stop Dathana and you from whatever sort of emotions you need to let lay bare. Oh, they're bare. Or cat. Uh huh. It's been a very stressful, very stressful time. I understand. Well, where are we going? Shall I meet you somewhere, or...? I think Tathana was going to teleport us. Well, that is helpful. It is. Also, wouldn't be doing my job. Do you have the scroll of teleportation for the Red Wizards? Should everything be okay in the Cloakwood? I do. Just in case everything's okay, we have someone that would like to go visit with them. So give me a perception check. <laughs> so why doesn't that person just go visit the wizards? You don't notice that anything. person can't go by it. Six. Yeah, you don't notice things. Why not? Is he very young? Uh, Atari <laughs> on the other hand looks kid. between you to oh, Balasar, looks back to you. Uh huh. Alone? No, we would all go if everything's good at the Cloakwood. What? I would not <laughs> join in on that particular excursion. We. Well, no, we MSG. MSG. You know, Dathana would not join you in that particular excursion either. Yes, we, we know. know. It took a lot of convincing to go to the Cloakwood, but... Well, okay. So, are we going now, or...? Yep, Dathana said she'd meet us back at the main hall. I see. So well, long as everybody has everything. I'm ready. Well, then I suppose we go. You got your dragon fangs? You I got the dragon scale. teeth, and she should probably have more if she's going to come. I will always carry more. Well, a lot of information. Should be very okay. fair. I got this scale. Uh, I actually have my personal teeth as well. We're not in this not form, ready. so I'm totally Remember fine. Remember the big two one for now. Yeah. Okay, okay. Look at the bow now. Looks like you can. Yeah, pretty you excited. Close. In case you do. Well, remember that one time I tackled Corellia Stan. I do remember that. Remember what last resort was for Near in Vain? I do. I'm pretty reckless sometimes. Good work. You know, I prefer we all live. Yeah. Well, so do we. Too. Uh huh. I show the scale. That's two now. It is, and you received it from. Hmm. Something to think about. Okay. We'll live. Don't worry. Good. I I have faith. That's just you and me. I'm talking about, though. Hmm. Not sure the rest of these guys. With your guidance. That's all I'm saying. Well, they've made it this far, yes? <laughs> um, so, I will meet you at the entryway of the, uh, of the tunnel. What? Show you one. <laughs> oh. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know. For those of you at home, we actually timed the five-minute hourglass. It was five minutes and 48 seconds. I'm a generous god. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> so, you all gather at the entryway of the, the mouth of this cavern, um, waiting for you, arms folded. This is the first time you've ever seen Dathana wearing anything like this, for the three of you. Boris, what you now see is a wizard equipped for war. On her back, you see there are, I actually have these specifics because I've been waiting to bust her out for a long ass time. Me too. Ever since we went to like the ethereal plane, not the ethereal plane, the astral plane. Where did, where did we go? Uh, you all went to the yeah, so you went astral to the plane? Uh, celestial? Celestial. celestial. Astral was Leo. 
<laughs> you see her holding in her right hand a pitch black ebony staff rising up about two feet above her head. Floating in circles, or concentric circles around the staff are 12 gemstones ranging in colors that seem to be rotating in orbit around a central diamond at the very peak of the staff. On her back, you see a massive cloak of deep blue that covers her back with intricate inlays of green ivy. On her wrists, you see bracers that look similar, although slightly altered than what you had seen Leaf wear in the past. Um, and <clears throat> a number of rings adorning her left and right hand. Uh, she looks over at you, and then for the first time as she looks, you see that across her, across her body is strapped a series of leather straps that are buckled with iron buckles. Set into the side is a beautiful leather-bound book that is just, you've seen this before, Fleetfoot. Uh, that is her spell book that is strapped to her side, and you notice that there are two clips that can be removed so that she can flip it open easily and pull the book out for easy, easy reach. Um, you also notice that there are a similar set of straps to her back, but you're not sure what's housed there as it is covered by the cloak. And as she looks back, you see a very strange, cold glint in her eyes that, although normally are welcoming in blue, at this point have taken a very cold steel color. Um, as we walk in and see it, I'm going to untie the amulet from around my neck and walk up to her and tie it around her neck. And say, I'll get that back afterwards. As she, she ties it and looks down. Nobody told me we were trying to look intimidating. But it's working, right? Oh, well. Uh, would you like to join me? Well, I can do it. Anybody got an extra belt? Um, I actually... <laughs> The belt of hill giant strength that's still in my inventory. Yep. I just need like a. There you go. What? Ah, oh, I forgot the word. What Wait, are they didn't called? you? Don't you wear the belt of hill giant strength? Yeah. Didn't you put that on? Yeah, oh, you've yeah. got it on. So that should be out of your inventory, my friend. Though. I was gonna say what? Have no, it on. Uh, belt of hill giant strength, man. <laughs> what? Oh, the, the chewy so thing. Yeah, bandolier. Bandolier. Are you gonna bandolier? I'm just gonna make a bandolier out of it and then just clip dragon teeth around it. I approve. That, I like that, Boris. There you go. You found a fine addition. I like you. I just kind of pull Fox out again in his new... With the new... So as you look, the there's a bronze... or co Bronze or copper? Copper, right? The original copper. one is copper. You see copper inlays arcing throughout, and now there are gold streaks running throughout the entire length. Oh, did the, the, did the, the, it took? Yeah, it took. Oh, he, I thought he said he needed more time. Mm -hmm. As you were doing this, I imagine it was set and... Oh, okay. Yeah, he's attuning, not you. Okay. Fox is attuning. Um, but then the teeth, right? And then jagged edged teeth kind of set into the sides as well, looking primal. Um, so, I suppose we are all... All of us. Let's go. Atari, you, you're coming as well? Well, yes, I thought that I would join you. Um, I don't see why not. More the merrier. I suppose you can keep an eye out for dragons, then. Did I get the scroll from her? Uh, it is still in her inventory. Okay. You have not requested it. To be handed over. You just asked her if she had it. Uh, which she does. <clears throat> um, she... Dathana pulls you, stand close, in a circle. We're going to the outskirts, just south of the River Kyonfa, as it connects with the Sea of Swords, a location you know well. That's where you killed your first true foe. You remember his name? Toads. You're talking about the Toads, right? You will remember in time. And she gathers you all together. Mandragosa? I, I need one of you to please roll a d100. Oh, I got this. <laughs> You're gonna actually roll no, it. I'll, I'll do it. Do you want to roll it? Sixty. Sixty. Okay. Dathana reaches out and grasps his... Uh, <coughs> The hands of those individuals next to her directing you all to kind of form a circle together. You all grasp each other by the hand and wrist and 
at once the world dissipates around you, and you all find yourself being pulled and torn through space. Okay. Do this here. All right, and you find yourself once again your feet into deep marshland. Looking around you, you see and hear the river rushing behind you. The landscape that you take in is the marshy soil beneath you kind of squelches into your boots and covering the very tips of your footwear. As you look around, the trees, you know this place. You've been here before. You docked here with Timothy Chance months ago in search of a cleric from the town of Greenest on the run. You take in the expanse. Something's off about the entire circumstance as you look about, and it catches you at once, just faintly over the wind, the smell of sulfur and rot that seems to be wafting, moving towards the sea. Would I know what that means? Um, Give me an intelligence check with advantage. Uh, just straight intelligence is 15. 15? <clears throat> you smelled this before with, uh, you weren't there with Corellius the first time. Um, you would be familiar with this, having read about it before. Sulfur is ten- has a tendency to be associated with uh, the hells or devils. Okay. It is still very light over the wind, and because your passive, all of your passive perceptions are just fucking nonsensically high, you, yeah, even you, Balasar, uh, you are able to kind of take in what is in the vicinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's up there. I just, I got it right back here. It's right right here. Um, (laughs) You (laughs) look about, and you see that the trees, and you remember the Cloakwood, a lush expanse of trees that range in height between 20 and 60 feet, depending on how deep you are into the forest. Uh, at this juncture, you would recognize that the forest is about a day's travel away. If memory serves, based on Leaf's previous instructions or previous acknowledgement, the distance always felt further as you traveled. So even when it looked a day away, you would likely travel for two or three. Um, There is a significant change in the way the forest has taken and looks. Leaves dead or dying, although still hanging as if petrified to the branches of the trees in the vicinity. Um, As you take around, taking the, the circumstance surrounding you, Grass is black. Clay and mud seep from beneath the roots of the plants. Almost as like a tar has taken over the vicinity. And there's just a general sensation of the world being off as you take in the circumstance. And as you look around, you see Dathana's visage of rage as she looks around and then noticing your glances makes her face impassive once more save the eyes which still glint of hard steel are there any oh, please are there any living plants nearby uh, give me a nature check ten. ten you take a moment to look On the exterior, you kind of peel back the bark. Beneath the decaying bark exterior, it looks to be living beneath, although for how much longer you're unsure. Okay. It's difficult to make out. Okay. I'll hold on to that idea then. Um, Dathan, what are we waiting for? You. And I will set off. 
She waits for the rest of you to proceed. I will follow suit. Fleet, why don't we take the carpet? I mean, we're trying to be sneaky. Forest is still a ways away, though. You should take the carpet up to the forest. Nathana, carpet? She looks at you, one eyebrow raised. Atari? Might you scout above? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you hear a yes to Thana. As they're and almost into the water, just <laughs> this massive form changes. And as it changes, you hear this and you can almost see the magic ripple across the land. And as it does, you visibly watch this massive, ancient, draconic form wince in pain and head whip around angrily to the east and just kind of... Draco Lich? Uh, Draco the horn once more. I fly, and I will seek out any of our draconic friends in the vicinity. And she... The beating of the air whipping around you, the muck kind of flying up in the vicinity, splattering against your clothes, and the wind throwing your hair into tussles, and it's, she takes off into the sky. I'll contact her in a bit if she needs us, but I advise caution. Ultimately, this is for you to make. I will not influence your decision, save you ask me. We, I say, we proceed. We can walk. Otherwise, we would have just taken the dragon. Okay. <clears throat> Understood. So I can keep walking. I'll follow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I will follow. You all continue towards the cloakwood at this point. Mm -hmm. How far are we from the cloakwood? Uh, from this vantage point, based on your past experience, it looks to be about a day's walk. Okay. Uh, you were on horseback previously, and you knew that at horseback it took you about three days. So you're not sure if the distance discrepancy still yeah, as is an effect. Yeah, as we continue to walk, I would I would look for any living plant life. Give me an investigation check. Ooh, that's really good. Twenty five. Uh, after about your first fifteen minutes of walking, you come across a a deciduous tree that has one fewer petrified leaves than the remainder and. You're able to pick up signs of life from it almost immediately as you approach. Although it's, it looks pretty rough. I will bend down and I'm going to cast Speak with Plants. Okay. You release the magic into the space. Mm -hmm. Immediately as you release the magic, you hear unearthly wails of pain that seem to assault your senses immediately coming from all around you and emanating from locations of dense plant life. And these shouts seem to just be of utter torture. As if it, it sets your hair on end and causes the hackles on the back of your neck to rise as you just you, you sense this from all about the sound of of what, to you at this point, are people being tortured. In, you okay? As I, like, I'm reacting to that pain, I'm going to try to reach out and I'm just going to ask where. You get, um... There is no word, but you feel... Have you ever had a migraine? Yes. Okay. So the ice pick-like pain at the back of your head when a migraine begins, or behind the eye of when it begins, you feel that sensation, but amplified, emanating from a singular compass direction. And it's no matter where you turn your head, it is always facing the dense interior portion of the cloak hood. Okay. Ted, you okay? 
That way. What's that way? I just asked if you were okay. You're okay if we go that way? That's where we need to go. But you're okay. I will be. Don't act like you answer questions when you're asked them either. What are you talking about? See? <laughs> the plant life is in pain. Well, let's go fuck something up. Dathana. <clears throat> She's kind of taken in each of you individually and makes that kind of interview more. It is unsettling. Dathana, when you first met her, is a woman of... Uh, generally kind temperament looking for humor in most things and seeking to kind of ensure everybody has their wits about them at this point in time there are no words just cold fury so that's a yes all right let's go that way see leaf's anger was as, inherited as we <laughs> as we walk away i just kind of reach reach out and i say i'm, I'm sorry we'll write this like to the point. That that emotion. Mm -hmm. You not expecting anything back. Yeah, you, you aren't even just, sure if it lands. Just point. but you are you do express it. Okay. Um You all continue? Okay. Mm -hmm. It is marshland, so it is considered rough terrain at this point. Um so movement speed is effectively halved. As you make your way through this, non-magical difficult terrain does not cost me extra movement. You got it. So for you, you're able to kind of find yourself way through the muck. But for the rest of you, it is. See you later. <laughs> it is. Can, can I dash for thirty feet? And like at like a foot above this. It's really interesting. As you all like continue walking, you look back and you see Dathana about two inches off the ground, just kind of hovering, <laughs> barely above it. We. Fine. Then I'll pull out the carpet. Still. So it just raises a little bit. Put everybody up on it. If you can float, so can we. I did not argue with you about that. But okay. You gave a look. Does the volume really change how high it goes? I hope so. I don't know. Still! <laughs> Kasana looks back and forth. Well, you know the key word. There is always them to experiment. Absolutely. Of course. <laughs> I value that, actually. Still. <laughs> you want on? Are you going to shout get loud? Bows are going <laughs> to... Up out of the muck. Your plate armor, like, <laughs> weighing you down deep into this mire. You're going to... I'm more worried about my boots, so I'm going to try and clean them off. Once As everybody off. gets on the carpet, I'm going to press the digitation. Not, you're not getting it on the carpet. I'll just kind of sit at the back of the carpet. I'm going to meditate a little bit on okay. the new scale. Okay. To see if I Why can. Why don't you just press the digitate the, the carpet the after everybody gets yeah. off? That way because it's now just one clean spell. Boots as well. Oh, good point. <laughs> <laughs> if I press the digitate yeah, the carpet, boots, they, don't they look nice. Marshy boots, and then you step on the carpet, and I don't have to do it again. I'm saving time. Jesus Christ, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Arguing about the important things. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, it's. <laughs> It takes time to get from point A to point B. <laughs> it totally does. Uh, okay. <coughs> so not uninhibited travel. Uh, not uninhibited. Uh, significantly faster at this point. Um, <coughs> so you all continue. What sort of path are you taking? Is it? Are you trying to be stealthy? Are you? Yes, I am keeping just like literally stealthy like, on a carpet, just above the marsh. Until we get to some solid ground. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see. We're not hey, I'm not shooting fireworks off. Fucking so. carpet moving through, moving through marsh. <laughs> Nothing okay. to see here. If Dathan is floating, so can we. Dathan has joined you on the carpet. She is sitting like almost side saddle on the carpet itself. Perfect. Um, as you meditate, Tybron. So if you're piloting, please give me a stealth check. With, um, in this case, it will be with disadvantage. Because you are on a six by nine fucking carpet flying over the marsh. We're, we're, we're all laying I, down. Do you want me to try to hide in plain sight? Maybe the you carpet? could make us look no, like ship so that we okay, look like I mean, ship in night that seven. isn't there. 
Oh, you, oh, to me? Yeah. Can I before? I'm, I'm afraid I didn't prepare that spell today. Uh, when oh. when we're flying, oh, can I can I cast pass without a trace? If you'd like, yes. Yeah. Plus ten. Plus ten. Mm-hmm. I'll allow. Plus the. No, just the plus ten from here. Pass so trace. you're so just another plus ten. Another plus ten on top of your stealth bonus. Yeah. Uh, on top of the stealth bonus. On top yeah. of your stealth oh, bonus. That's, yeah, that's like a like, thirty-one. Yeah, I'm not fucking you around. Shadows <laughs> of the mire envelop you, and you seem to even at the towards the mid-afternoon, you continue making your way stealthily through the. Um, so since you are moving at a stealth pace, it is slower than what you would have in normal movement. Effectively half the speed. There's the something he doesn't want us getting to. The carpet is sixty feet per round. It's this will be effectively thirty feet per round because you're attempting to fly slowly. Yeah. So we got normal movement. Perfect. You've got normal movement, as opposed to half of normal. That's movement. fine. But hey, um, well the carpet. Is as you cool. meditate, Tyberon, it mm-hmm. takes you about the next thirty minutes. Okay. And there is a deep and guttural growl that kind of t- resonant that resonates in your head. Why am I not flying on Atari? P L Y T H U. P L Y T H U. Play who? Thank you. What does that mean? It means be weak. Okay. Thank you. Why, why, why is Boris not riding Atari? Atari is up in the sky. She took off a while ago at Tatana's request. Yeah, but why is he not riding her? Oh, kite surfing her. Uh, well, because there's nobody. It's not safe if you're not tandem kite surfing. You need yeah. a spotter. It is, it is a tandem activity. <laughs> but what if you just tied it around her waist? I understand that, but I could be riding a dragon with... <laughs> <laughs> she took off after the drakhorn sounded. That's what you really should have been working on. It's a better harness. No, because if I can get on the dragon and drop a bunch of dragon's teeth in one spot. You like the Y wing. I think Atari would like it. <laughs> She's got one of her own, man. Uh, okay. You all continue traveling this way for about an hour. To two hours. Um, pass without trace lasts for an hour. It does. So if you would like to cast it again, let me know. Otherwise, there will be another stealth check with disadvantage. What are our surroundings like as we? You continue to move a little bit more into the dense marshland. You can see now we are approaching what would be the exterior of the forest, but it's still, I mean, it's still a, a ways away, right? You're moving stealthily. Um, I would ask that at this point, about an hour in, no, you'd still be too far away. Um, well, I mean, you can. If anybody would, who would like can give me a perception check with disadvantage. With disadvantage? What if I'm driving? 12. 12, thank you. What's the disadvantage? Yeah. Just uh, because of the nature? Because of the, the nature of where you're traveling through. Okay. You said perception? Didn't smire at this point. Well, my disadvantage was the I'm worst. I'm more concerned roll, about so. where Atari is and why I'm not riding her than I am to look around. You're kind of looking around and you yeah. see this small back up in the sky, just kind of swerving in and out. It should be up there. 17. 13. 13? That's a one. I rolled the worst disadvantage roll you could roll. I have to tell you that Tybron is wholly disturbed by the change in the Cloakwood. It is a complete 180. It's thematically correct. Um, thematically, this makes sense. Uh, seeing you look around, <laughs> Dathana leans into you, Boris... If you'd like, I can contact her. <laughs> Understood. And she <laughs> leans back, and you see her head. Uh, if I'd like, of course I would like that. Low back, and f- her eyes flash white for a moment. Five hundred feet is still splitting the party. <laughs> I would like to point that out. <laughs> Boris would do it, but he, I yeah. <laughs> and then she, and she's in that stretch for about thirty seconds before she leans forward. She says that if we stop for the evening, we will change the way we. Okay. Okay? I mean, to be fair, she is getting quite a view. Boris, I can dimension door you up there. Uh, you would it's be going okay. There as well. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. She looks at you for a moment. Do you typically attempt these sorts of feats? Yes, all yeah. the time. You should have seen when we uh, were flying on a dragon. Ah. Well, and I mean flying. I mean, mean, so long as they work, I can't really pass any judgment. I mean, mostly. But if not, I have my my ring. Uh Aha. That helps out quite a bit. An insurance policy, as it were. I'm a bard. 
Yeah. I see. Huh. Okay. <laughs> she goes back to sitting silently on the end of the carpet. You let me know if you change your mind. About what? Well, yeah, but when we stop for a night, I'm not going to just pop up on Atari's back while she's flying. That would throw her whole equilibrium off. She's an ancient silver dragon. She can she probably... A point, true, to be fair. She's scouting. Not necessarily expecting a dwarf to pop out of the sky. So, hello! How are you? I come here to ride on your back right now while Does you're in flight. You? No, I'm not going to interrupt her while she's flying. Okay, fine. That's very, that's very polite of you. She did not interrupt me while I created dragon's teeth, so. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So far be it from me. Exactly. Uh, so I will need a... Are we casting set past the other trace again? Or no? Are we stopping for the evening? At this point, you are approaching mid-afternoon almost. Well, the equivalent would be about 6 p.m. Yes. Then yes, I'll cast it again. Okay. So a stealth check with disadvantage. Plus your plus your stealth bonus plus ten. So plus nineteen. So just a stealth check with disadvantage. So twenty nine. Uh, you continue like the wind, weaving your way through I'd be the swamp yeah. for the next hour, the mire for the next hour. I don't cast level two spells, but I'm out now. Um, as you continue approaching, you see that unlike before. Uh, and Boris, you'll watch all of them be a little bit shocked by this, but unlike before for the three of you, the forest is approaching a pace. There doesn't seem to be any sort of barrier that is enacted that traps you in this endless maze as it did in the past. Um, save those who knew the way. It seems to have been dropped. They really are gone. And there really is a portal to the Nine Hells. We don't know that. We just know they're gone. So we're in the forest? Uh, you are approaching it at the pace that you would expect. So you, if you kept going, it'd be about another 8 to 10 hours to good. hit the forest. Yeah, and it looks just forest. decimated, you said? Really it looked like this. It looks the portal's still here, say. blackened. You want to make a bet? 10 gold? I'll bet 10 gold. 10 gold it is. 10 gold that there's a portal to the line. Hills, Tibbs, you went in on this? Sorry, no one just found it here. Tibbs, you Ten gold says there's no under the nine house. Twenty. Ten, yes. Ten gold. There's no uh, no portal. Did palace. All right. So to the side. Uh, we're we're making a bet. No, we're Make not. Make it twenty. You twenty. Got it. Twenty. There is. I'm on Dathana's side. I'm. Um, me too. Does this look normal to you? <clears throat> For war, yes. Yes. That is the problem, succinctly. Are we taking the car? Boris, I understand that you. This is your first time visiting my old home, so welcome. Uh, it does not normally look this way. There is an ancient barrier enacted wards that I'm sure you're actually familiar with, given what I know of your profession, that tends to distort the way the world operates throughout the exterior of the designated Our locale. Really <laughs> uh huh. It is no longer active. Is Got it. it yes, just but just still, this looks normal for war. It does. You are correct. So, Tithana. Yes. You said your family's safe? To my knowledge. Where are they? The last you heard. The last I heard, they had detected more unsavory energies moving into the space. So they're, st they're, st they're still decided in Decided to leave. They left moving northward. They, they left were going to follow the river Kyanthar towards Elchiril. We had Onthar designated a safe home for us, given our trades with from my knowledge, Elturel still remains relatively untouched by this conflict. It's remained to the south of the current bar. So or to the the, they've left the Cloakwood. Yes. Tyburn, for the first time in centuries, my family is no longer in the Cloakwood. Okay. Slap him on the shoulder. Why would you bring that up? I care about her family. <laughs> but we're a little touchy right now. I didn't know if they were there and we needed to help them. I didn't know if they were in danger. I didn't know if they could help us. We're about to go into battle most likely with some devils. Having a couple of direwolves on our side wouldn't hurt. 
But we got a couple of handsome devils. Again, for what though? If populace has already been evacuated and water is not here anymore, why are we here? Closing the portal. Well, assuming there is one, which I if certainly there is there one. isn't. But if there is, then our goal would be to, of course, close it. But this is my question. Would the plant life still be... This is an anomaly. Any sort of magical anomaly where two planes touch when it is unnatural is there is an impact on the land. They are in a constant state of torture. I felt it. Well, that is unfortunate indeed. I don't know what could be causing that. It's outside of the realm of my expertise. Let's just pretend that and go. I mean, I'm assuming we're still on the carpet having mm-hmm. this conversation. You're still traveling. I thought we were like approaching it. No, you. So you're about eight to ten hours away <clears throat> from what would be the exterior of it. So I we still like, have not even gotten to night where I get to ride dragon again. So yeah, here at about 7 p.m., are you going to cast uh, Pass Without Trace again? I'm out. Okay. Uh, so stealth check with disadvantage, please. Yep. It's because earlier in the day I used uh, Ooh, primeval awareness. 12. 12. Okay. It's becoming a little bit more dense as you progress towards the proper center of the cloakwood. Um, and it's becoming a little bit more difficult to navigate. Multiple times you find yourself getting snared on branches of these just utterly petrified skeletons and husks of what were once massive and proud mighty trees in this in this forest itself. Um, a number of twigs kind of crack as you fly. Uh, yeah, okay. um, as you continue approaching, as, su- as the sun begins to fall, as it gets to around what would be 9 or 10 o'clock in the evening, um, you see the form of Atari kind of flying down into the sky above you. Everybody give me a perception check. Those of you with dark vision, it will be a straight roll. Without dark vision, it will be with disadvantage. Even me? Uh, you're in... F- this is considered marsh. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> 20. 20, thank you. 12. 12, thank you. Thank 14. You. Dark vision is still a thing for Sorry, dwarves? 14. I don't honestly know. Uh, it should. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Straight roll, you said? Or then I wasn't paying attention. Straight roll. Straight roll. Perception. 12. Um, balance over 17? 20. 20. 17. 14. Uh, 14. 14. Tybron, yours was? 14. 14. So... Fleetfoot, Tyberon, and Boris, you're fairly distracted by the snapping of branches and the sound of uh, Atari making your way closer into uh, to land within a within a clearing that she can locate. Um, Balasar, you and Dathana, you're looking around, your eyes are kind of flitting about the space. You hear a... So Atari, I figure we can attach these. Do I? So Atari's with us. Why? So uh, you see Atari kind of swooping in, at which point Zatanna looks at each of you. Her eyes flash white. Her head tilts back, and Atari veers off. Um, at this point, would I? I don't hear the stomping. I just heard. It's, it is still very much in the distance, but throughout you're able to your your honed ears to what are this essentially a stealth mission in a military type operation are you're trying to take in the surroundings and you hear just in the distance about what would be 500 yards 600 yards this deep do we need to get out of here listen did you hear that primal awareness level one okay what are you looking for dragons dragons no <clears throat> Can I do an intelligence check on the sound? Well, you're trying to determine what the sound is how, from? How many... Is it bipedal? Is it sound like it's got four legs? Okay, give me an intelligence check. The DC's going to be a little higher. Okay. Yeah. Uh, straight intelligence? Straight intelligence. Uh, Wait, so your favorite enemy is a fiend, yeah? I have fiends and dragons. All right, so with, uh, with the advantage. Okay, 11. 11? You take a moment and stop and attempt to time the this time between steps. The closest thing you can equate it to 
is when you, and it's even longer between stride mm -hmm. than um, Blagothkus. I think we're close enough that Fiends. we have to put the carpet away. Are I'm going to use uh, for the night level one the morning, on Fiends. Okay. Within wow. six miles? I'm <coughs> not in favor <coughs> terrain, you so I not believe so. it's only one mile. It is only a mile. Stopping, but I yes, I can do Fiends. I can do Fiends. You can do Fiends. fiends. Yep. As you take a moment and concentrate, as everybody's quiet in this current circumstance, uh, Tybron kneels down between you all, and you see him assume the same meditative stance he has in the past. And as you branch out the consciousness and catch the spell, this vicinity is littered. So I'll just kind of look up and I'll do. Um, it is at this point that I have dropped the carpet and we're hiding that I would like to cast Magnificent Mansion. Okay, so you get out your diamond and your, wait, so what are the components? It's a spoon, a... A miniature portal card from I, well, each item worth at least five gold pieces. I would imagine with your inventory, I will allow this to be retroactive regents, just this once. Okay. Portal card from ivory, small piece of pol polished marble and a tiny silver spoon. As you and I have discussed this spell previously, I will allow it. Um, and open... Uh, to our magnificent mansion. You and just usher. See him as you set it to the side between trees. You watch Fleetfoot What's gather a, a number of different One components. Minute. And it takes him about a minute as he puts all these together and then all of a sudden this crackling <laughs> doorway rift appears and there's this beautiful white door that opens up with the brass handle. Everybody in. Well, nice. Does it have cable? Yes. Everybody in. I'll go uh, last. So you designate everybody here and Atari, I would imagine? And Atari, and as Tathana's passing, be like, she's welcome, but I need to close the portal to keep us hidden. So she looks at you. The doorway remains visible for anybody, but only those who are welcome can see it. While closed, the portal oh, is yeah, invisible. 100% correct. Thank you. Thinking about the wrong spell. I've been reading about it. Thinking about the wrong spell. Um, she'll find it, I'm sure. Or she'll continue to circle about. I will go last. You can go second to last. Okay. Um, Tathana walks in and as she looks, she as she passes by, excellent spell work, and continues walking into the mansion. I'm gonna walk in. I've got. Whoa! A this place is nice. Okay, so as they walk into the mansion, what do they see, Fleetfoot? <coughs> I would like to be fighting off one of the servants. No, I do not need you to take my coat. <laughs> uh, magnificent foyer, um, grand. Spiral staircase. You got the mini printed for this, right? Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, it's right there. Um, <laughs> there it is. Um, giant welcoming stairwell, very lavish. Um, and then off to one of the sides, like a large sitting room with a crackling fire and uh, servants with mugs of ale. As they walk in there, these kind of floating ethereal servants as they. Would you like some ale, sir? Would you like some ale, sir? I would you like love some ale? Boris two immediately comes to you. Would you like some ale, sir? Would you like some ale? Do they just kind of prop you the meat soup here? <laughs> Do they? Do they serve meat soup? You know what? Servants, meat soup for everyone. That sounds delightful. You all step inside the. You should really just sufficient call it food to serve a nine-course banquet. For a, I'd like us all to have a nine-course banquet. What would you like to have made? Nine courses of stew. <laughs> different varieties or just just beef? Um, different varieties rules. being different there should kinds be of meat. Different game animals in each one because it does all meat soup. Then there is exactly. as yeah. you. There are about four servants who just kind of float up in front of you as you relay the the <laughs> nine course meat stew meat soup uh, entrees, sir. We are more accustomed to calling this stew. But yes, nine courses. Don't, we don't say that word here. It is stew, though. Yes, sir. Yes, master. And they kind of float away into the kitchen and the exterior. So, by the way, I got a mansion. That's pretty cool. I can see that. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. Thanks. Now, the interior of which is a little bit gaudy in some areas. There might be an overuse of white marble. I also would like to point out that I'd like large portraits of myself all throughout the mansion. Uh, there are all Did you the watch Critical Role? I mean, seriously. Tiny <laughs> portraits of everybody else. There are comically large, comically small. Mostly variety, nude, variety I think we can say. Portraits of... And he doesn't, actually, which is odd. <laughs> I know. Uh, 
Uh, as you approach the Their fireplace... Their bard literally did just almost the exact same thing. <laughs> it's a bard thing. It's as you approach the sitting area, there's Shut a roaring the fireplace that is six feet by four feet. Uh, above, you see in, in, a, in resplendent manner an incredibly large... I'm talking 14 feet by 20 feet <laughs> portrait of Fleetfoot. One paw fur up atop a massive stone outcropping the other down against toes lightly dipping into a resplendent pool of crystal clear blue water behind him trees and Fleetfoot himself gloriously nude although mm. it's hard to tell given mm. he's covered in fur but mm. so good hands were you neutered after this picture no I'm nude in the picture yes but I've seen you, you nude asked since if I was then. Nude in this picture. Were you neutered you after asked if this I was picture? Nude in this picture. I think you were neutered after if this I picture. If I was nude, yes, I'm nude in this picture. <laughs> Tybron, you are assaulted with a variety of nude profiles, portraits, and uh, let's just photo booth reels of Fleetfoot's nude form and a variety of poses. I'm just gonna look at him. I wouldn't expect anything less. Thank you. Uh, you all, as Bethana walks inside, she's. Oh, okay. She looks around for a moment. Well, I want stew. And she turns and just immediately walks into the Wait dining Wait until area. you see what's in your corners. I don't, I'll sleep anywhere. I'll go outside. <laughs> oh, I've closed the portal. Okay. So, you all gather together are served a nine course meal of a varietal of stew beginning with any, the very, any venison stew beginning oh, yeah. with the very light veal progressing your way through That's heavier meats as you progress through the fillet then to a lamb then from there Turn to nugget. venison uh, all of which are stew. red meats there's something you swear is a almost a, a buffalo that you had noticed in the migration patterns as you made your way through the highland moor on your caravan all those many months ago um an absolute delightful tour through the red meat ages of stew. I Paired with uh, a variety of root vegetables, um, Start legumes. There are a number of tubers as well, uh, but not a green in sight. Could I... Excuse me, Garçon. This is one of the, the... You could swear that if this corporeal form had a, to be plump, he approaches. Yes. As so. I have a very full belly and I can assume I'm quite tipsy at this time. Any bread and honey. Cornbread. Obviously. Cornbread and bread and honey. Yes, sir. And it <sighs> Fleet. Floats away. This is the best trick. I feel it's also worth mentioning that all the servants are new as well. I just where, read that I can decide yeah. what they wear. And where their genitalia are, you just see floating wisps of, that changes based upon your particular preference. Oh my god, so it's they like really have like Sims blurred out things on <laughs> no, them? No, no, That's it, amazing. It changes based upon your preference of what you'd like the servant to look like, actually. It just want it to be blurred out. Just so you're like, uh, I just got this. This is, I this is the best trick. And we're invisible from the outside. Yeah. So, and after a long rest. For now. We're good. Okay. Anything this else seems like, like to... a really bad way to put the portal to the abyssal plane in here, just so you win a bet. Boris, <laughs> that's genius. <laughs> Twenty gold. I said there was a portal in the blowpoint. I'll give you five. If you don't want me to spit in your face, you put your hand down. <laughs> you are going to spit in my face in my mansion. Yes. Servants, change Balasar's room. Can I go find Tithana? <laughs> Yes, uh, and about 20 of them just kind of float away. Uh, Dathana is sitting at the table oh, eating with you there. all. Yeah. Boris, okay. if you want, once you're done, that door right there, that's for you. Oh, shit. <laughs> the most luxurious firing range. It's going to be amazing. As you kind of you can see, open the door, you see a log. <laughs> close to the couch, that's cool. Uh, okay, do you all anything else you'd like to accomplish inside your magnificent mansion for the evening? Sleep. Sleep? Um, you all have your own quarters, by the way. Uh, if you don't like anything, ask the servants. They'll do what they can. I'm sure it's fine. I'm quite full. I could use some rest. It's been a day. Or nine. Only one in here. Can I set them to working like sweatshop and bullets? 
just kind of <laughs> approach. What would you like us to do, sir? Just gonna make bullets. As really you have go time. to put the regents in their hand, you watch the bullet tink hit, but the gunpowder and just kind of slide through. Can perform any task a normal human servant could perform. So as it slides through, <laughs> as you watch it, as it slides, <laughs> can perform any task. I was not done yet. <laughs> as it slides through, you see them go. This is an unfamiliar substance. One more time, and they think for a moment, and it. No, I mean, I'm going to be making bullets, too, so they can help, but... They can rub your shoulders. However I can get more out of get what I got. Uh, so they can be Foot set rub. to the task. They will be... Uh, in this way, they will be assisting you, so you can make your tinkering checks with advantage. Okay. And you'll be making... How, however many servants you decide to set to the task, you can make how a many fair number. I've got 100. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> going to make bullets until I'm out of the stuff. Can they get stuff for bullets? I don't believe I have that in that's a new concept. But you can have 20 of them to help you out. Okay, Will 20 do? Sure, I've never had my own workforce. Take 20, let me know. <laughs> gonna put on his union hat and get them all to work on those. <laughs> I'm gonna retire to the master bedroom, which is, of course, the most luxurious. I'm imagining a waterbed? Yeah. Okay. Did you say advantage or no? Jeez. Yes. Yeah, 16. a waterbed. <laughs> 26. 26? Yep. Uh, in this period of time, over the next three hours or so, you're able to, with your materials at hand, utilize about 90% of the materials you have and make about... Are you doing both bullets, both for Pepperbox and for the pistol? 70-30. Um, 70-30, okay. So with that in mind, you're able to make about 125 bullets for your... Uh, no, hold on. I'm doing the math. 175 bullets for your uh, pepper box. Okay. And <clears throat> another uh, 75 for uh, okay. your pistol. So oh. you're able to utilize the majority of your remaining supplies and essentially with their Are assistance make sleeping? everything. It, he because three he has hours. 20 assistants That's helping right. him, he does this over the span of about two hours. And it's all your reagents and stuff, yeah? Mm -hmm. I was going to say, because also it, anything created by this spell disappears when we leave. So that'd be unfortunate to have a bag of bullets and just <laughs> there they go. <laughs> and if I'm gonna call out the other two, I gotta yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would that would suck. Um, I I would just probably after I'm done eating just go to sleep. Okay. But I would have like Wait, a really, mean quick, really quick quick conversation with folks. How do you feel? Um, <laughs> Foxers is very very quiet. I feel whole, or more so than I have in a long time. But I am worried for Atari. This close to the Drakhorn. Drakhorn. And she hasn't she hasn't well, come in yet, right? It sounded. Tathana said she would let me know if she or you said she would find it. Mm -hmm. That's my bestie. We want to keep her safe. Should I should I go get her? Do you want me to open it? I'm having a conversation. Oh. Telepathically. She will. She will keep herself safe, I believe. I raised her. I would hope so. Oh yeah, I'm in my water pit. There's not cause to worry yet. It's not a couch. Awake me, and we can get Death on it to get her in here. No. If I begin to worry, I will wake you. Also, you look pretty badass right now. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh. You should have seen me when I was a dragon. <laughs> I, <laughs> wish, <laughs> I wish I wish I could have been around for that. Hmm. You think I look good at a bow? <laughs> you should have seen me when I was a motherfucking dragon. Um, you all bed down for the evening. Got somewhere to go? We got 20 minutes. Yeah, there's 20 minutes left, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. If you guys need to go home. Um, I'm sorry, podcast, I'm not a dick. I promise. <laughs> um, you oh, all thanks. awaken, rested. Kind of, uh, the servants for you, fleet foot kind of fluttering. In. Good morning, master. Uh, good morning. We have done you what you have requested. Wonderful. Nine more courses of breakfast stew. Nice. You. I, that's what I love about you guys. You can read my mind. We can't do that, sir. We just follow your orders. 
from now on, you'll agree that you can read my mind. We agree. We read your mind entirely. Oh, you're, that's what I like about you guys. You can read my mind. Yes, that is something that we do. So breakfast. Go ahead and gently wake the others. Balasar's a heavy sleeper, so it really helps if you scare him awake. Yes, sir. And they <laughs> <laughs> float out of the... Like this. <sighs> Hashtag broken. T- uh, Tyberon and... Boris, you are awoken by the gently swirling winds <laughs> around your face, just kind of like a fluttering breeze that you would get off the coast of, a, of some sort of desert island. It just kind of flutters around for a moment, and as it persists, even through your swatting, it just maintains around your head. And there's a very slight, Master has asked us to wake you. Gently, though. You're not Pelissa, are you? <laughs> nope, that's the dragon-looking one. That's not a the whole, not a big dragon, just a normal-sized dragon. Understood. We will not scare you awake then. <laughs> you should have scared me awake. That would have been fun. Would uh, you like me to do that next time? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we pulled guns on us last time. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're ghosts. They won't be hurt. It would be great. It's good practice. <laughs> <laughs> Tyron, you experienced the same. <laughs> Master has asked us to wake you. Thank you. Are you Balasar? <laughs> no. Then we will not scare you awake. I appreciate that. <clears throat> stew is ready. Oh, uh, same stew as last night or different? Nine courses of the best stew. Breakfast stew. Uh, we Brennan, will see you in the kitchen. Bread and honey again? Yes, master. Thank, just, you. thank you. Balasar, you experience the same fluttering <laughs> around your head for a moment. I just kind of sit, I go, I, I just kind of sit up and look around and mm-hmm. I'm like, I cannot compete with this. <laughs> Just wait till I summon it again. It's different. There is a light fluttering around your head. Master has asked us to wake you. Okay. Are you Balasa? What? Are you Balasa? Uh, no way. Master has asked us to wake you. I'm up. Are you Balasa? I'm up. Are you Balasa? Yes, I'm Balazar. I see. <laughs> you feel a very unsettling I just, experience. I just, I so see Large Marge from <laughs> Pee Wee's. Just <laughs> tell him Large Marge. <laughs> Marge there is a very unsettling experience happening beneath your armor at this point, <laughs> progressing down beneath your chest, moving to your waist area, and all of a sudden oh, you feel a, sh- job. You feel a sharp pain emanate from... Your groin. Just, <laughs> that is just a very sharp, dagger-like pain as the wind continues around your head. Master has told us to frighten you. You have no more genitals. What? You all come down to balance are getting stripped down. <laughs> Naked. And as you as you approach Balasar, as you put, there is just a gentle whirling wind of a seemingly <coughs> perturbed-looking air servant <coughs> fluttering around. They made your junk disappear, didn't they? God, I love them. <laughs> he just. <coughs> You're welcome, Master. And he. Oh, you did this. Uh, oh, I thought you were up. just greeting the servants in Tabaxi local custom. They'll they'll come back. It's that, fine. That was oh. just for you, Boris. Oh, they'll come back. Tybron is laughing. <laughs> oh, they'll come back. Don't worry. Oh. I'm going back to bed. Oh, no, we, no we, need, we need to keep Three going. servants kind of come out of the woods. <sighs> Master has asked us to wake you. You are Balasar. We will frighten you. <laughs> uh, sorry about your junk. It'll come back. Probably. So Breakfast. Does this mean no more disco I dick? I Do you, you look down there? Think about it. The, with the whirling <laughs> wind around... You notice Mike Wazowski's still there. Okay. Although it was disturbing for a moment when it wasn't. It was, you have to do a little Come double on, take. I want you to go grab it as he does it. Uh, okay, you all get ready. Have your breakfast. Anything you'd like to accomplish in the morning before setting out? Um, so, game plan before we go out with the I ducks. called riding on dragon. Boris has got the dragon riding. He did. Tithana, can you I chat with her uh, name? Chat with Atari. I'm afraid Atari. she did not come last evening. But you told me. I did, didn't I? 
Can you talk to her, or do we have to be out of here? I left. I am able to manipulate your magic still. She's circling. And our hearts. The Dracon has sounded twice more in the night. She is searching for its origin point. So far, she has not seen any draconic activity through the evening, but she is going to bed down about a mile outside of the Cloakwood. She doesn't want to... Doesn't want to come here? She believes it would be best to not alert the presence of any activity that she has seen in the evening. They almost found her once. They as in dragons, or they as in fiends? They as in the large number of devils that are currently occupying Mild Home. Devils. What do you say that we go take it back? I believe so it is portal. foolhardy, but a plan of action that I agree with. Very well. Your power buzz do what? Sorry, I was trying to win my bet. We're going to go take the cloakwood back. Perfect. Shall we? We shall. I shall. Front door? Oh. <laughs> and the door. I thought he couldn't well. use portals in cloakwood till he paid up on bet. And I'll walk out the front door. You just kind of <laughs> back into the <laughs> human. <laughs> Close the door. All right, now <laughs> no, don't go. Back into the humid, disgusting, <laughs> swampy, marshy rest. mire. You do receive the benefits of a long rest. Your hit points are restored, as are your spells. Uh, I don't think we've spent hit dice in a while. We might have, but any hit dice that we spent, remember, as a long rest, you get back half of what you spent previously. D&D Beyond does that cool. automatically good. for you. Good, 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 good. Thanks, D&D Beyond. Um, <clears throat> Maybe you so, should cast press the digitation before we go and mansion next time. It's going to be mess when we get there next time. Oh, it's dead. Oh. <laughs> uh, you all exit the mansion back into the humid, damp, insect laden, stifling, sulfur smelling marsh filled with petrified plants of once live and thriving woodlands. What would you like to do? close the portal if I... Well, what a wonderful smell you've discovered. <laughs> That's why we went to the mansion. That's a big <laughs> part of the reason we went to the mansion. And it has gotten significantly stronger the closer you get to the entryway. So that way? I would point to the same direction that I remember. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to... Do you want in? Um, based on what Atari's told me, we have... A and that was not much, given much of it was guarded by some sort of magical dome. Um, there are a number of patrols, the amount of which I'm unsure of. But that information was only because she was able to suss out two of them. <coughs> uh, these are larger devils. She's unaware of the type, given the height at which she was flying, to avoid detection. But they did seem quite large. Those footsteps I heard sounded pretty large. And that lines up, doesn't it? Then it could be greater devils then. Let us hope for all of our sakes that it's not the case. Well, we'll just for these patrols. Maybe take one out and see if they have any information. We can certainly try. I, I do speak infernal. Well, that's convenient. Really? I speak. Oh, me too. I speak seven languages. I speak all of them. I know, because you are the thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You all uh, exiting Fleetfoot's magnificent mansion. I like the sound of that. Uh, portal closing behind you. Determining your next plan of action. Are we walking? Are we... Uh, uh, I think we walk at this point. Turn and begin making your scouting. slow well, Why don't trudge. you let me scout ahead? We're walking, we're walking, we're walking. You can, you can still do... Th can you do the thing? No, that was only... I don't do the thing. Uh, turn and begin making your slow trudge through the marshlands towards the cloakwood. I'm going to scout ahead. You got it. Tybron sneaking off into the distance beforehand. And as you begin making your way closer to uh, a place you once visited, a place you once... one of your uh, members called home, that is where we are going to end this evening's session. Thanks for listening to Natural 20. We meet every Tuesday night to roll dice and try to make it out alive. On behalf of the party, I hope you enjoyed this session.